Hello everyone, welcome back to our third episode of Flick Flop, where three cinema lovers rise to the challenge of deciding if a movie from the past is a must-see movie or a total dud. So, I'm Phil Marriott, it's time to welcome Sean Vickers. <laughs> Big Hi everyone. <laughs> How are you? I'm here, I've got my notepad, I'm ready. She likes a bit of hanky-panky, <laughs> this one. <laughs> My memory is like a stiff today, Phil, so I can barely remember my own name. That's why I've got my notepad and it's very kind of like studious. Mm, yes. <laughs> I'm loving the look. Gail Porter, hello, how are you? Hi, Sean. Do you know how to spell your name? <laughs> I, I think so, just about. <laughs> don't, don't put me on the spot, Gail, I'll fail. So we are reviewing another movie today. It's a movie from 1985, my favourite decade, the 80s. This is an American comedy drama film directed by Susan Seidelman. It stars Rosanna Arquette and Madonna. This is really interesting, guys, because Madonna, obviously, you know, it's her movie, really. But the title itself, Desperately Seeking Susan, really did ring bells for me because it's like I was trying to find her because she's not really in much of this movie. I guess you all know that, I mean, she was in it for 25 minutes in Talk Talk. Yeah. And it's like an hour and 45 minutes, isn't it? <laughs> it's mad. It's a bonkers story, though, isn't it? Rewatching it is a bonkers story. A woman following another woman on a day gets mistaken for another woman, and there's some bonkers thing about some like Egyptian antiquities. <laughs> <laughs> like that makes his plot line for you. Thanks very much. It's brilliant. My favorite thing about this movie is like, um, if you're not entirely sure how to write a movie. Bring in amnesia twice, and then it's going to work course. out. <laughs> I forgot about the amnesia, which is quite ironic. <laughs> Can you imagine if she hadn't hit her head twice, though? It would have been like a... I know. It imagine would have been a loop. Once. It'd be bonkers. Yeah. Poor, well, poor Rosanna Roquette. Well, who tells the story about the whole film, or do we tell the story? I think you're both uh, good I, at I, setting I, the scene. It's so bonkers, this film. I'll, try, I'll give it a good go, but there's so much head banging. <laughs> Rosanna Arquette is like reading this, um, she's reading this, is it New York Times or something? And it says, desperately seeking Susan, I'll um, keep the faith, I'll meet you Tuesday, Battery Park, 10 a.m. and um, Jim. And so Rosanna Arquette is having like a really boring life and thinks, oh my God, who's this Susan? So she wants to be Susan. And so she turns up and then Sean, take over. <laughs> so she turns up to see, to see Susan on the date with Jim and they have these like rendezvous where Jim can never find Susan, so he puts an article in the newspapers to try and find Susan. And they have these little, like, kind of, like, you know, frissons. Gorgeous wig, Gail. Uh, <laughs> and then, they have these little frissons. This is me being Roberta, trying to be Susan. You're being Roberta. I feel Roberta like I've let the yeah. team down, because I'm not wearing any lacy gloves or pink tutu. Sean, I was expecting <laughs> you to, to wear something. I am wearing... I'm actually... What you, what you don't know is that I'm actually wearing a tutu, Phil. You just can't see it. <laughs> 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 I'm in a ballet pump. Rosanna Rochette turns up, she sees Susan and Jim on this day and romanticizes about, about it all. But in the meantime, this scenario has happened where Madonna, uh, Susan, has been involved with some character that's stolen some Egyptian antiquities. And there's a mix up of characters, and they believe that Roberta is actually Susan. Uh, and she kind of gets semi mugged in the street and bangs her head and wakes up and doesn't know who she is, but she then now believes she's Susan. It's so brilliant because you, you kind of have to suspend disbelief, but you, you're kind of falling for it all, all along the way, I think. It's so ridiculous. Of course. Pure escapism. Rosanna Arquette wakes up and she's got um, Madonna, obviously Susan's jacket on, and then she's been followed by these people that are trying to find these Egyptian jewellery the Egyptian mm. earrings that are hanging off. So basically, Madonna Susan had slept with this guy and nicked a whole bunch of stuff, didn't realise it was like Egyptian artefacts. The earrings that would make your ears green. Roberta thinks she's Susan because she bangs her head. She ends up going up and meet, is it Des? It's Des, isn't it? Oh, he's so incredibly handsome. So oh, then, shit. and back to you, Sean. Roberta has this kind of like, moment to live out this fantasy life that she's always wanted you know she's not sat at home being a dull housewife she's basically just being this kind of madonna-esque character character shopping in thrift stores being fabulous but it is quite brilliant i don't know if you know this but susan seidelman wrote who's the director of this also directed the first ever episode of sex in the city i found that out today my mind just went i think it's a real tour de force for madonna because she has been in some real hams 
over the years. But this is actually Madonna playing Madonna. She does a well, really good job of it. That, I mean, you hit the nail on the head because it is Madonna just playing herself, isn't it? And that's probably why she was so good at it. But then again, you think about her being in Evita. I mean, Evita, it's a, it's a tour de force performance. True, that's it? very true. For you. I stand corrected. She was amazing in Evita. But I do think, you know, the 25 minutes that she did have in the film was quite good. And I think Roberta's husband, Gary, was quite funny in the fact that when Roberta left, banged her head and then suddenly thought she was Susan. And actually, do you know what? When there's really bad films, when people bang their head, you think, oh, do you know what? Yeah, that's a great idea to just like make the film carry on. It actually worked and it was quite funny because (laughs) she didn't know who she was and everyone was a bit confused. And it was a little bit like carry on, but in America, but in New York, but also they brought in a lot of like New York culture of the 1990s and there was all the clubs in there and there was cameos from people that you know um, there was a lot of Jim Jarmusch um, references and it was like there's artists there was DJs there was music there was everything and there was one point when Gary who was the the, the, um, the husband of um, Roberta eventually finds Roberta when she's again banged her head and she's suddenly <laughs> remembered <laughs> It's like two times of amnesia, which is fantastic. I loved it. And then <laughs> Gary says to her, oh, my God, are you a prostitute? And she's like, what? Obviously, because she doesn't know. She's been, you know, I'm not gonna, we are spoiling it a little bit. I am spoiling it. I don't think there's anyone watching that hasn't seen Desperately Seeking Susan, okay. though. So I think you're probably fine <laughs> to go home. I want to find the one person who's like, oh, my God, flick flop. Spoiler alert. Okay, wait. <laughs> One of my favourite things was like when Gary said to Roberta after she banged her head again and he thought she was a prostitute, he says, well, I know that four out of five prostitutes are lesbian and we can get help for this. Oh my God, 1985 come through. I was trying to work out why Roberta was was the board housewife though, because she always came across as quite conservative. I mean, the husband was as well, but it was almost like she wanted to be that daring person. It's a bit Grease-esque, I suppose, isn't it, with Olivia Newton-John's characters? Well, there's quite a few films like that from the 80s. If you think about it, the 80s had this thing where there was always some kind of role reversal and swap. You think about something like Big, or you think about like Mannequin, like Kim Cattrall's part mannequin, part human being, and she flips between the two. They love this in the 80s, this idea of kind of like this dual personality, this dual role running through a film, which I think is cute. And here's the shocker. Did you know Suzanne, Suzanne Vega apparently auditioned for the role? Of Susan. I, I'm aware of that. Also, I think originally it was going to be Diane Keaton and Goldie Hawn. Yeah. That's a different movie. I That's mean, it totally is, isn't movie. it? Can you imagine Desperately Seeking Susan with that cast? It just, it wouldn't have been the same film, would it? At you all. know what? This is a different podcast because there's a whole bunch of movies where people have played different parts. So, um, Harrison Ford in Star Wars, that was supposed to be... Was it John Travolta? Which again is a different movie. Yes, Imagine that. It's a different movie. I mean, one of the reasons why I love this film is it's really a love letter. It's like Jeremy was saying, my partner earlier, it really is a love letter uh, to New York, really, isn't it? And it's a New York that, that isn't there anymore. I know you both have got partners. I'm single and in the Metro, like the person saw in the Metro or saw in the Tube or something, they've got something like that. I read that every single day that I got in the Tube and always it starts with woman with brown hair, woman with red hair. I never ever see one that goes, that bald lady. And so I was looking at- (laughs) Looking for Scottish bald lady. I remember. (laughs) It's probably because you've got that Debbie Harry wig on when you're out. Yeah. Um, yeah, next time you read it, girl, it says, looking for Debbie Harry. You know, it's you. <laughs> I, I, felt like, I felt like Roberta. I was looking at all the sort of like those ads and she's obviously looking for that leg that she's not that happy with. And, you know, Gary's just, you know, he's selling whirlpools or whatever he's doing. He's What's he selling? He's selling pools and, and stuff. Yeah, he sells like hot tubs, doesn't he? And she's looking for that different life and she's looking in the, the private ads. And I do that every single day I got in the tube and I just think, okay, I'll just have a, <laughs> have a quick look. What if Roberta didn't have amnesia? What if Roberta was just like, I just want to live a different life and I've got an excuse to live it? You know, because she comes home that day and she's wearing that lovely jacket with the big eye on the back, the pyramid. And the husband is like, oh, what are you wearing, hun? And maybe she just is a bit like, screw it. I want to live a different life. I'm going to do something different. Yeah, what but I, know, I never believed that she could be, she could be that rebel, though, that Madonna was. Because like, it's like when she had that cigarette dangling from her mouth, it's like, no, <laughs> <laughs> you were never a smoker. 
She was like that. I'm just gonna. She's going through the bag. She's like that. Like, <laughs> 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 and I was like, oh, go get her. I love that scene where Madonna, towards the end, when Madonna gets in the bath, she goes in the bathroom, they're back at, you know, the house, and she gets she gets in the bath, she goes, oh my God, this is an amazing bathtub, and she stomps in with her, like, high-heeled boots. Were you seriously thinking about wrecking the bath? <laughs> I'd be thinking, if Madonna got in my bath, I'd be delighted. <laughs> if Madonna wrecked your bath, I mean, that's a story, isn't it? When she walked into the store to get the diamond boots, I was just like, and also the fact that Roberta was just following her all the time. Now, if that happened now, I've had that happen to me and they got arrested, but yeah, <laughs> in that it was great. There's a name for that. <laughs> I, know, I know we were joking about the fact Madonna isn't really in it that much, but it really is her film uh, for so many reasons. But I didn't realise until today that some of the scenes were shot in the Danceteria Club, which of course is where she no. started, wasn't it? Yeah. What? No, that I, I had where no did you find idea. that back toy film? Been poking around. I love the dance scenes when she got Gary, who's Roberta's husband, and obviously he's the straightest man in the world ever. And there's this bald guy that's dancing, and I was like, "Is that me? Is that me? No." Uh, anyway, she's like, "Yeah," she's dancing to her own music, and she's hanging off the jukebox, going, "Yeah." <laughs> the group, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is the best ever!" And they made me miss clubs. Like I miss clubs. You know what I mean? I've realised I've been in a club for so long and it made me just really like pine being in an iClub with a lot of fun people. A lot a lot of scenes in movies where they film club scenes, they're dancing but they're not dancing in time because obviously they have so many difficulties with not being able to play music in the scene but that actually felt quite genuine. It felt like she was dancing mm -hmm. to the theatrical track. Well, sometimes really we fair. music but really low so yeah. they can actually, yeah, so sometimes they can. But um, yeah, it was great. I, when I watched her dancing, and I was like, oh, old school Madonna. I like Madonna like that. You know, that was a really fun film and I really, really enjoyed it. And, I, <laughs> and at the end scenes, you know, when, <laughs> when I, I call him a baddie, that's what you call the, the, the people that are naughty in, in the 80s or the 90s. They're baddies. And he had the blonde hair and he had a gun that didn't even look like a gun. And he was a baddie. <laughs> <No. laughs> Daddy. And I was like, oh my gosh, it was not like a proper villain. Like now we've got these like films that people are like shooting each other with AK-47s and stuff or like bombing houses. He had a baddie gun that looked like you could have bought it from like Camden. Yeah, That's and he, he got smashed over the head with a bottle as well, which was so obviously <laughs> a sugar a sugar bottle, not, not a real glass bottle. But for some reason, you just don't care. You're just like, whatever, I'm just going to roll with oh. it. It's so sad. There was just something also, something that looked so lovely about the fact. I, I thought, I loved her fashion because it really made me think about classic Madonna. And, she and then did I love so that cool kind of suitcase well. that she had. You know, the suitcase that kept oh falling over. Oh my God, with the skeletons on it. I, oh really, I, I thought that suitcase is amazing. How do you get your hands on one of those? Because yeah. that's really mega. Right, Sean. Phil, we need to get one. I love that. When she's actually taken out, when she's got all the stuff from um, the hotel, you can see it's actually bulging open. And so you know it's going to burst open in front of the bad guy. You know. like, all the awful. cigarettes come churning out. And the guy with the blonde hair just turns like that going. <laughs> I also like the fact that she kind of like, when she went into a new thrift store, she just changed her look and then that was her look. Like her wardrobe was constantly evolving she just got to a new thrift store and be like oh this is nice pop it on that's my look for today i kind of love that kind of breezy way of operating don't and worry about it just pop it to your local thrift store that's Amazing. the other thing as well because so many people take the piss out of 80s fashion but she looks so cool in this movie there's something quite Amazing. i don't know very kind of forward thinking about how she was dressing as well because I think for something from the mid '80s, you look at the you know the guys in suits, and their suits aren't necessarily <laughs> anything that you'd want to wear now. But I think Madonna is definitely wearing stuff that a lot of women would wear now. Maybe not so much the rag doll stuff, but I just think she looked really good. I love, I love, when I was a kid, I was like all oh, fingerless gloves. If I hadn't been unwell, I would have dug it all out. <laughs> but um, I had the fingerless gloves. I had the puffball skirts. I had the little jackets. Obviously, I'm not Madonna, but I was just, I loved it. Loved it all. We should all have a Madonna party. Yeah, I'd be up for that. I agree. What I would love to do is like a kimono, you better don't. Like, which Madonna in a kimono could you be? Because there's so many amazing kim Madonna kimono moments that I would love to have a party for. That would be my dream party. So I think we've come to the conclusion that it is a flick, Desperately Seeking Susan. Mm. Oh, it can't be anything else, Phil. Yeah. Oh, no, definitely. Oh, no, but hang on a minute. At the very end of it, 
the, the title of the newspaper, What a Pair. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> she does show her pair off quite a bit in this movie. <laughs> What a pair. I was like, I love that. That was one of my favourite things. <laughs> so it's now up to the viewers to decide which film gets review. I have already started a poll on my Twitter, uh, which is Phil underscore Mary, if you haven't followed me already. By the way, do subscribe to this channel as well. Uh, it's a 2004 superhero movie, which I haven't seen yet. It stars Halle Berry. It is Catwoman. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some, a lot to be said about Catwoman. Can I dress up? Yes. You can totally dress up again. Of course you can. The, the, the thing is, though, I said this last time. I said, oh, I'm so up for dressing up in Madonna clothing, but I've just totally let the team down now. Well, uh, we all have. You know why? Because, because guess what, listeners and viewers? Gail and I are both sick. It's sick flop this week. We're yeah. both ill. So we're going to be back on fighting form for the next one. Oh. Um, we, we, we made a tiny effort. Hang on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my Debbie Harry. Before I go. Say the best to last. There you go. Well, hey, look at that. Gorgeous. <laughs> Jealous. <laughs> Rock it. Nice on you, that Phil. Actually, <laughs> I was hoping that someone would say that <laughs> next time. <laughs> Thank you for watching, everyone. Good to see you guys. Love you. See you next time. <laughs>